Number 37. Show that a 30,000 line per centimeter grading will not produce a maximum for visible light. All right, so we're talking about maximums, therefore we're using the constructive formula over here on the right-hand side. We just used it for the past 35 problems, so I think you might be familiar with it already. So all we're going to do here is um, we have to show that this 30,000 line per centimeter grading will not produce a max. All right, so um, first, why don't we find the um, distance between the lines? We've done that before, right? We basically have to take, uh, if this is 30,000 lines per centimeter, if we flip it, then we will find the number of centimeters. In other words, there's one centimeter for every single 30,000 lines. When you plug that on into the calculator, you get one divided by 30,000, and that works out to be about 3.33 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, but that's centimeter per line. We need it in terms of meter per line. So all you need to do is just simply centimeter on the bottom, meter on the top, and you're familiar, right, with that there's a 100 centimeters in one meter. So you essentially have to divide this thing by 100, which would then have it come out to be, have a distance now between the lines, or the length, the meter per line, would be 3.33 three times 10 to the minus now seventh. And that's in terms of now meters per line. Okay, now that is the D value, all right? Okay, cool. So how can we show that there won't be a maximum? Well, the best way to do this is to actually solve this equation right here for the sine of theta. And the reason why that is, is because the sine of theta can only be a certain set of values. It can only be between 0 and 1, inclusive of both 0 and 1. So, therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write sine of theta. And that equals now. So what I want to do is I want to try to make the lowest possible value here on the uh, right-hand side. Uh, the reason being is because I want it to be a fraction. I want to try to get it into this range. So in other words, the lowest value for m would be the first order max, 1. The lowest wavelength right, would be the shortest wavelength, would be for visible light, that is 380 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. That's the wavelength for violet light. And then divide that now by the D we found, and let's see what we get. So this is then 3.33 times 10 to the minus 7th. So 380 times 10 to the minus 9th divided by then 3.3333 times 10 to the minus seventh, and I know I put a one there, so I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but there it is. So this comes out to be now a value of 1.14. Hmm, oh, all right. This is not in between this range. And therefore, plug it, well, go ahead, plug it into the calculator, try to solve this. Do inverse sine of 1.14. What do you get? Error, right? This doesn't work. So there you go. That's why it doesn't produce a maximum, okay? The angle is going to be too Essentially, the angle is just too big. It just doesn't work. Not even that the angle is too big. It's just not defined. I don't know. You know, you, you, you get the idea. So it says letter B. What is the longest wavelength for which it does produce a first order maximum? Okay. So now think about what we just did. Okay. So we're going to take the same equation here. But what I know now is I'm going to solve this for lambda. Okay. Or take this same equation. Solve this for lambda now. Now remember, the, the value I'm going to be plugging in here is the sine of 90, or in other words, I'm going to be using the value of 1. Because just imagine this for a second, look at this equation. So as this number gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it's going to get closer and closer and closer to 1. Okay, and eventually it's going to reach 1 at some point. And that would be then technically the quote-unquote longest wavelength. I know you're saying, well, wait a minute, it's getting shorter, shorter. Yeah, but that's the longest wavelength. All right, for which it does produce a first order max. So all I'm going to do now here is take this equation, plug 1 in for sine of theta, m is 1, wavelength is what we're looking for, and our d value was the 3.33 times 10 to the minus 7th. And wait a minute, when we solve this for lambda now, what do we get? It's the same thing as the d. Right? That's the longest wavelength, okay? Okay. So there's let it, that's B. What's the greatest number, greatest number of lines per centimeter diffraction grading can have to produce a complete second order spectrum? 
All right, so again, this is kind of the same. I know I'm all over the place here. This was like letter A, here's letter B, and I don't really know. I guess I'll put C all the way down here, all right? Um, so what is the greatest number of lines per centimeter, right? Okay, so let's start with the same formula. So it's basically going to be D sine theta is going to be equal to M lambda. Now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the greatest number right of lines per centimeter okay so I gotta be solving for D here so because that's the way we have to do it right we gotta take that in the inverse of D so here's your formula okay now if I want to find the greatest number of lines per centimeter I want to minimize the D the reason being is because they are of a reciprocal nature we just showed that before so I want to minimize D here to minimize D, I want to maximize the denominator, right? I want to maximize that denominator. So in other words, the maximum value for sine of theta down there was 1, right? Remember, it's between 0 and 1, inclusive of 0 and both 1. Then the M value, well, they told me second order spectrum, okay? All right, so now in here, we need to plug in the maximum wavelength of 760 times 10 to the minus 9th uh, meters, all right? And you, it might not make that much sense. You might be, I thought we were minimizing D. Well, we are, but there's something tricky about this. Check out number 28. All right, I explained it there. So this is going to be 2 times then 760 times 10 to the minus 9th. And that now works out to be a value of 1.52 times 10 to the minus 6th. And that is then meters per line. But we don't want to know meters per line. We want to know lines per centimeter. So just flip it. For every single line, there are, or there is, 1.52 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. This would be line per meter, but I don't want to know line per meter. I want to know line per centimeter. So meter on the top, centimeter on the bottom, one meter is for every 100 centimeters. See you later, meter. And now just do the division. So it's basically 1 then divided by, now parentheses, that value you just found, multiply that by 100. And then bada bing, bada boom, there we go. So this is going to be... Uh, 6.58 times 10 to the third. And that's lines now per centimeter. All right. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. All right. If you can help us out, that would be awesome. Like and subscribe. All right. Definitely helps the channel. We appreciate it very much. We wouldn't be here without you. So we do appreciate your support. All right. Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon. See you in the next one.